Okay, in our last video, we explained how when you push a button, you're telling the Arduino to stop the void loop and go and run your interrupt routine. Now, what happens when you push a button? Essentially, you're taking two pieces of metal and you're smashing them together. That completes the circuit and tells the Arduino, stop your void loop and go run your interrupt routine. But what's happening in real life when you smash two pieces of metal together is they actually bounce off each other a few times before they settle together. It could be two, three, it could be a dozen bounces. Now for us humans who are turning on and off a light, we don't care that the light actually flickers a few times right when it turns on. But if you're a computer checking that circuit, maybe 10, maybe 100,000 times a second, each one of those bounces before the button settles counts as another push. So essentially what's happening is your interrupt routine, your ISR, your interrupt service routine, is actually gonna happen seven or eight times when you only push the button once. Now let's say you have an application or a video game where you're trying to count something or turn on and off a light. What you're gonna end up happening is when you push the button once, you're gonna be giving your player 10 points or you're gonna be operating your, whatever it is you're operating 10 times. So we're gonna use a neat little trick with software to get rid of this debounce issue. Now we're not gonna stop the ISR from happening 10 times. The button's gonna bounce and the ISR is gonna happen and your void loop's gonna be frozen for those 10 times. But what we can do is stop the variable or whatever you want to happen in that ISR from happening. So we're not gonna stop the ISR from happening. We're gonna stop the variable from being updated within the ISR. Now I'm gonna go back to the same PowerPoint we were in with the last video. We're just continuing on with it. So we ended off over here where you were building your button circuit. And then we moved on to, um, we'll show you in the PowerPoint what a debounce looks like. So essentially the voltage goes up and down as the button bounces around. Um, as long as the voltage goes from a low region to a high region back to a low, that counts as a bounce. If there's any fluctuations just in the middle, like static, that's fine. Now remember digital ones and zeros, only five volts and zero volts. So in an oscilloscope, a bounce is actually more of a stepped graph as opposed to like a spiky graph. Um, okay, so we're gonna use a software solution. What we're gonna do is we're gonna keep track of when was the last time we updated our variable. And then regardless of how many bounces there are, we're not gonna update our variable for a quarter of a second. So there could be one, two, three, a dozen different bounces. We're gonna wait a quarter of a second, which is enough time for all the bouncing to settle down before we allow our variable to be updated. Let's see how we do that. So here's our same code. So if you look at the second to last line of the code in void checker, that's our ISR name, we're adding one to counter. Counter equals counter plus one. So we're counting essentially how many times the button was pressed. Every time you push the button, you stop the void loop, we go into your void checker, which is the name of the ISR, and we add one to counter. Now, Look at the last line of the code. We have something there called micros. Now micros is a function. It will show up as orange if you type it correctly. Micros is a stop, a timer that turns on when the Arduino turns on. And it just starts counting up. You can't start it, you can't stop it, you can't reset it. It just turns on and runs as long as the Arduino's on. But what you can do is look at it and record the time that you're looking at it. So we have here our last line of code, last micros, which is a variable last micros equals micros. What that's doing is recording whatever time. So let's use a clock, for example, even though it's really a timer, a stopwatch. Let's say it was four o'clock. So last micros equals four o'clock. So last micros is gonna be four o'clock. Now, what does that represent in real life? That's the last time we updated our variable counter. Now let's do it to our second bounce. We go back into void checker. And the first line of our void checker is an if statement. If micros line minus last micros, so let's say a second has passed. So now it's 401, or a minute has passed. <coughs> so now it's 401, because remember micros is the actual time, you can't start or stop it. It's 401 minus four o'clock. It's only been one second, that's passed. So the difference is not greater than 200,000. So even though the void checker is happening, our if statement is gonna be false. So we're not gonna update the variable counter to equal counter plus one. We're gonna wait till at least 200 microseconds pass, which in this case is a fifth of a second. If we wanna do a quarter of a second, we do 250,000. So we're not stopping our bounces, and we're not stopping the ISR, the void checker from happening over and over again. 
what we are doing is we're ensuring that at least a quarter of a second has passed since the last time we updated our variable that we know that the bouncing has stopped. Now, what's the catch with this? Let's say I want to push my button really fast. Let's say I'm playing a video game and I want to push the button 10 times a second. It's possible that in this case, I'm going to miss some of my pushes because my player is going to push the button, but the code is going to say, hey, a quarter of a second or a fifth of a second didn't pass yet. We're ignoring all of those pushes. But if you make your, your window too small, the bouncing might not be finished and you might actually record the first push. There'll be a few bounces. A tenth of a second will have passed and you might get the last two or three bounces and give that player some extra points. So it's somewhere between a tenth of a second and a fifth of a second um, where is the ideal time with our buttons where the bouncing has, has stopped and the player is not quick enough that they'll push it twice within that window. So again, micros is the time of day or the time since you're doing anything on. Last micros is the last time that I push that button. We want to make sure enough time has passed between now and the last time I push that button where the bouncing has finished and now we can do count three equals count three plus one. Again, it seems like a small nuance, but when you're playing something like a video game or turning things like light switches on and off, it's crucial that we only count one push for one push of the button. And the way to do that is with a little if statement in your debounce code. All right, good luck, and we'll see you later.